So my number three is this movie called The Favorite, which is from 2018, uh, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, starring Olivia Coleman, Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, and a bunch of other people. The log line on IMDb is in early 18th century England, the status quo at the court is upset when a new servant arrives and endears herself to a frail Queen Anne. So I had this movie on my list because the one thing that I love about the Oscars is an upset win. And especially when that upset win happens to be right on the money. <laughs> and I think this movie with Olivia Coleman's Best Actress win um, is one of the, well, in retrospect, we can make theories and say, oh, well, this wasn't a surprise, but at the time, mm -hmm. this was a huge surprise. So let me sort of lay out uh, what was happening. So the Best Actress Oscar, the nominees were Olivia Coleman for The Favorite, Yalitzia Aparizia for Roma, Glenn Close for The Wife, Lady Gaga for Star is Born, Melissa McCarthy for Can You Ever Forgive Me? The narrative up till this point was that this is Glenn's year nominated eight bajillion times so far. Uh, she finally has a movie which has, has something to say, very timely in the Me Too era, uh, very good performance. She won a couple of precursors. Um, and then on Oscar night, they announce, announce Olivia's name and the whole room gasps. Uh, there's this whole trio that happens in the, in the seats where Emma Stone is just completely out of her mind that Olivia has won. The director walks over, they kind of have this trio hug and Olivia is genuinely shocked. Like this is not a person like now Olivia Coleman is like a household name already in just like mm -hmm. a few years from that time. But you know, back then that was not the case. So, so I don't know, I, I love that moment. And then I guess segue into the other thing that I love about the Oscars is great speeches. And I think Olivia Coleman gives one of the best speeches in recent times. I've watched this speech often. If you ever want to feel uplifted and that things can go right in your life, even despite all odds, this is the speech for that. You know, her genuine shock, it's and humor and awkwardness and adorable Britishness all sort of comes through. Uh, she even calls out Glenn Close saying that, Glenn, I love you. I didn't want, it, this, want this to go this way, but this is how it has. It's just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but I, this is what, you know, you love about the Oscars is that even though actors will say, oh, I don't care and blah, blah, blah. People care. Of course. And you should care in my mind. Why shouldn't you? You know, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, this is why this movie, or this, this win or this movie is, is on, on my list. But talking a little bit about this performance and, and kind of the, the, the turning ties of the Academy at this point and, and such, I think to me, first of all, this performance is this very interesting high wire act between camp over the top to something very subtle, fully realized, a performance that is very vulnerable, but at the same time, not a victim person. Mm -hmm. She's playing a million tones of being pathetic, but also being alluring, but also being strong, but also being a total sort of crazy person. Um, also, the Oscars love physical transformations, and this is a physical transformation, which is sort of inside out, if you will, like mm -hmm. there are moments where she looks sort of grotesque and such, and she's done a great job, but she's also very ill Queen Anne. She has like syphilis and a bunch of yep. other things. So she's, you see all of that portrayed, but it's not a prosthetic heavy performance. And that's the other thing I love about it is that it, it, it's a transformation, but not reliant on prosthetics that much, which I, I always sort of give credit to. Um, so yeah, love this performance. Uh, Meanwhile, I think the, the Academy makeup at this point, like this to me is the first year where you really start to see that the broadening of the Academy and the Academy becoming more international mm -hmm. is starting to show its, its product in the output where a win like this to somebody, you know, Oscars love to award the ingenues when it comes to female actresses. Uh, you know, somebody who's sort of in their mid-career, mid-life, if you will, but a relatively newbie to movies, that too from television, is not something that really happens very often. But in retrospect, 
to me sort of feels like they were ushering in the new metal strip of our times. I think. Mm -hmm. Like since then, Olivia has been nominated already, like I think twice. They should nominate actually. again this year. I think this is the third nomination, yeah. isn't it? I think third nomination yeah. in like like four years, which is yeah. incredible. And I think she's going to get nominated pretty much for everything she does, and and she's very good in everything she does. So you know, which is great. So I think that's the other thing that's happening, which not always goes very well with the Academy, but I'm very glad it did. And then talking a little bit about the movie as well, like this is from Yorgos Lanthimos' standpoint, maybe the most successful movie, but still a very odd movie. You know, it sort of turns the whole period costume drama up on its head with like weird fisheye lenses. It's beautiful, but it's also quite grotesque and kind of ugly at times. The characters are very real and contemporary. Like these three women mm -hmm. could be in any time, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then speaking of that, like the trio of these women, the power dynamics between them, there's something very real and human, which you don't often get plucked out in period dramas like that. Period dramas usually are meant to, you know, make you think about it and revel in its glory after the fact. Whereas mm -hmm. this movie kind of jolts you while you're watching it because these people just feel super contemporary and it plays with these the push and pull of greed and ambition and what's right, who's exploiting who, all of that is just so complicated in the movie. So again, you know, not a typical Oscar movie uh, of sort of my, our times growing up, but I think no. it really reflects the change of the guard in terms of the Academy, Academy's membership, them ushering in a movie that is very indie and obscure, but at the same time, contemporary mm -hmm. and not some like non-entertaining boring kind of a movie you know this is not a first cow this right. is not drive my car this is a contemporary movie but it happens to be weird and indie which i just love that this movie was even in the race in such a big way so so yeah that's my number three cool yeah i'm glad you put this on your list i had not seen this movie um oh. at the time i I, the director, uh, the, this, the, the Greek director, I'd never seen any of his films. They always struck me as too odd and it like off-putting. So I never would see one of his movies. And actually I had the reaction to this movie as well. I really didn't like the cinematography, <clears throat> that fisheye lens. Yes, it is kind of grotesque. The music's kind of disturbing. The end credits are off-putting. Like it, it took me a while to kind of get into the film actually as I was watching it. But when it ended, I was like, that was really great mainly through the performances of those three. I actually found Emma Stone, who's an actress I don't typically like, as one of the best performances I've ever She's seen her do. Movie. I'm like, wow, you can actually act. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> she was fantastic. And uh, I, I, you know, I got what he was doing, like trying to contempt, like bring into the present uh, a period piece and make it relatable by a lot of the visual style that he took. So it doesn't yeah. feel like a, you know, some Merchant Ivory production of right. a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, static camera shots, uh, very staged acting. It seemed very, very contemporary. Um, and, and just really what the movie's about, which is this power dynamic between these three, um, you know, where these two, um, I don't remember what they were, uh, like courtesans, essentially, advisors to the queen. They're both fighting for affection uh, for the queen. And Emma Stone's character, I feel, just doesn't understand the true meaning of power. And at the end of the movie, it's like she the whole time was just going after the queen's affection. And that's all she wanted. And whereas Rachel Weisz realized, was, was trying to then get power through the queen, but not just be a sycophant to her. And I think right. at the end of the movie, when Emma Stone realizes basically she's no different than the pet rabbits that the queen's right. keeping in a cage, she is one of those rabbits. I was like, oh, wow, like this is actually a pretty cool uh, twist on like a, a, a classic, you know, new on like new ingenue kind of coming onto the scene, trying to steal the spotlight from the, the older, the older star or advisor who was Rachel Weisz. Um, so I, I really enjoyed the movie and I think, you know, the performances especially and why I think they were all three of them, I think were nominated that awesome. year, I think, yeah. and they all deserved it. Um, and Olivia yeah. Coleman, who is an actress I had been following for quite some time, she was on a TV show, a British comedy show that I loved ever since college called Peep Show. So I'd always yeah. seen her as a, uh, a comedic actress and she's so freaking funny on that show and i thought it was odd now she started getting a tv drama like this is kind of weird like she's now a dr dramatic actor and now she's like like you said like a big 
uh, celebrated dramatic actress. I mean, just does a fantastic job in, in everything that she's been in. I mean, her performance this year in um, The uh, Lost Daughter, I thought was just one of the best I'd ever seen her done. And it, it sort of then makes me think, you know, comedic actors going into drama usually find a lot of success. And I just do think it's like the, the skills that are involved in comedy lend themselves much better to drama than, than the reverse. Like it's hard to go from drama into comedy, but I think the best comedic actors can go into drama and really just knock it out of the park. Like a Jim Carrey or Adam Sandler or Robin Williams. Like these are all actors that started out comedically, but some of their best performances are, are totally serious and, and dramatic. I think Olivia Coleman falls into that category too. So I'm really glad you put this movie on the list. Again, I was, it was very, I was very off put by it from, I remember watching the trailers being like, this just movie looks too weird. Like I can't stomach this. And about halfway through the movie, I'm like, I don't know if this is going down well with me or not. And then it wasn't until the very end. I'm like, oh, now I get what this movie's doing. And the performances just were elevated. And I, I really enjoyed it um, and can see why this was so uh, nominated that year and why Olivia was definitely deserving of this win. And I do remember it just being excited when she won, just because I've been a fan of hers like right. 10 years before that, just loving her on Peep Show and the various British comedy shows that I'd watched her. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you know, it feels like someone who had been following and rooting for for a long time, finally found some mainstream success. So I'm, I'm very happy to see her career continue to develop in the way that it has. She's great. Doesn't happen like this often, you know? No. A bit of a Hollywood princess story, if you will. It's funny you say that. I mean, I had watched The Peep Show, but I only really got into her with Broadchurch and Light Manager. So for me, uh, okay. uh, she's always been kind of a dramatic actress, but, but I sort of, I don't put her in the Jim Carrey comedian camp. I actually put her in the Meryl Streep can, camp actually, because this is somebody who can sort of do anything mm -hmm. as well. And, but there is some sort of comedy thing. Cause if you go back to Meryl Streep's like early, early work, like even before the movies at repertory companies and such, she basically did a lot of like odd slapstick mm -hmm. comedic sort of work. And, you know, her sort of more over the top performances sort of show you that she devil that becomes her even Prada, mm -hmm. but she's sort of known more as a dramatic actress, obviously, but it's interesting. There is some like, tie in there and there are very few people who can sort of inhabit that line so perfectly and mm -hmm. it's amazing to see that Olivia is in that camp so yeah yeah she's fantastic and again thanks for putting this movie on the list I yeah. probably never would have I watched it, it otherwise <laughs> um but yeah it was good I definitely recommend people checking it out hey there it's Alex if you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had make sure you subscribe to our channel movies that shaped us to get full episodes Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.